a brave man who'd put his money on a winner of this game. It's still so very even and so very, very close. Very nearly through. Rogers! A goal by Rogers! Don Rogers! Hello, I'm Don Rogers. And I'm proud to say in the 1960s and 1970s, I played 487 games for Swindon Town Football Club. In all, I scored 181 goals, of which two particularly stick out in my mind. They were both scored in the League Cup final at Wembley in 1969 against the mighty Arsenal. And smart away for Swindon. Rodgers is streaking ahead and he's onside. Saturday, March the 15th, 1969. What a day, what a game. Not just for the players, but for the whole of Swindon. They say it was a ghost town. Villages in the area were cleared too, as fans in buses, cars and trains converged on Wembley. Well, it built up on the way. Um, obviously, the, that's the days before the, the M40 were there. Um, I remember crawling through High Wycombe, sort of looking at your watch, thinking, were we ever going to get there? We, sort of, we actually then stopped in Beaconsfield, where we saw a lot of other people we knew. So there was a, two or three drinks in Beaconsfield before going on to Wembley. Uh, and then to see all the other coaches and, and Swindon fans actually at Wembley was, was unbelievable on the way in. I remember that just about every vehicle that anybody had in Swindon that was roadworthy went to Wembley. I remember that we had a really ramshackle coach and the coach driver couldn't got lost between the restaurant that we went to and Wembley and we got there late. And I remember coming down the stand, um, we were sitting probably seven or eight rows back from the dugouts, sitting just in front or just behind the youth team. And as we came down the steps to our seats, I remember a huge roar. On the face of it, the only thing Arsenal and Swindon Town had in common were the colour of our jerseys. The Gunners knew Wembley well. They played in the final the year before, the and the team, team boasted players of the quality Without of Frank surprises. McClintock, Number George Graham, Graham Bobby man, Gould, Terry Neal and Bob Wilson. Arsenal goals. were in the first division, well we were in the third. The trick would be to With turn that to our advantage. As the official programme notes on the day made clear, being the favourite carries his own pressures. In sporting jargon, Arsenal are on a hiding to nothing this afternoon. If they win by a netfall, they can expect no more than a grudging, and so they ought to, against third division opponents from fans other than their own. If they win unimpressively, they'll be panned again. And if they don't win at all, they will never be allowed to forget it. Little, Little Carol Welsh was our mascot. What a job. Six years old and walking and out in front of 100,000 people. I reckon she may have brought us well, a bit of luck. A long way for that. The thing I remember more than anything is being six years old at the time. Um, was just the, the roar of the crowd. It was just daunting for someone that age. Um, and the pitch was just like a mud bath. And I remember I had a job to run because I was just picking up mud as I was going on. Because there was no grass, it was just all mud everywhere you looked was mud. <laughs> John Smith well inside that centre circle as Arsenal kick off. Game on. And on the day, the and biggest challenge to both teams was the pitch. It was as filthy Smith as the weather. It looked as if it had been played. Well, I think the horse of the year show had been on the previous weekend or something like this. And, uh, you know, in in my career, it was the only time I ever got to Wembley. Uh, and and most, most players at that level at that time didn't get to Wembley. And then to go there and uh, see it in that state, it wasn't, wasn't the best. We all know what the pitch was like. It was absolutely shocking. But, I mean, um, we were used to playing on it, I think, as well, with our home pitch being the same. The professional players nowadays wouldn't even want to train on it, let alone play a, a cup final. Right? But, I mean, that's the way the pitches were in those days. I mean, the weather was so bad from September to March. We didn't have any choice. I mean, we played in all sorts of weathers they would never play. I mean, I've played on ice before now, you know, but, I mean, it's the things we did, but I mean, it's much better playing on these lovely pitches nowadays. It must be. Lovely play. And there to take the return. Good play by Rogers. Smart scored in the first half, we thought we could win it. 
When Peter oh, Jones was so that the increased pressure from Arsenal, we believe we should win it. Oh. But when Bobby Good scored five minutes from the Can final whistle, both we and Arsenal knew we faced extra time. Another half an hour. In the event, it was all the time we needed to win it. I think the, the beauty of our squad is that we were together and we were fit and obviously the, the pitch suited us on the day. I think they'd had a, a few illnesses or so they, they made out during the week in, and uh, they say the pitch sapped their strength more than ours, so really it, things went our way on the day. And then obviously we had Don who, who, who could float over that kind of mud and uh, got the two goals for us. Very nearly through. The first goal I scored was obviously happened so quickly, it's just put it down and shoot and hope for the best. Um, and the second one, the third one we got was, you know, I can remember all of that. We run from the halfway and we remember everything. <laughs> and when I'd gone round Bob Wilson, I mean, that was a great feeling. I used to say to people that when you get that far clear, if you're a long way out, you have to make your mind up what you're going to do, and I'd made my mind up to beat him anyway. So, and on that pitch, anything could happen. But as I say, the lovely thing was I'd gone round him and I'd just hit it and I could see it going in the back of the net and that was a lovely feeling. And did you see the whites of his eyes as you went past? Oh yeah, I could see that, yeah, especially looking down at him afterwards. <laughs> I've been back to Wembley twice and I'm pleased to say we haven't lost any of them. That first time was the time because we were only then in Division 3 playing the mighty Arsenal. The others, of course, were the, the playoff matches where we were playing teams who were... Uh, Possibly were equal to us and out of the same division. But then it was unbelievable that a Division Three team would get to Wembley in the way we did. So I have to be honest and say that much that I enjoyed the other two visits to Wembley, obviously that first one was the visit. We had no right to be there. We were playing the mighty Arsenal. We had no expectations of winning really, but, but by the same token, when Don was playing, you didn't imagine getting beaten. It made my life really, that game, yeah. I mean, everybody in the world seems to know about it. You know, I mean, I get so many, well, not funny requests, but people ring me up and I had somebody ring me up today, say, could you come and have my autograph from Stoke? And I think, after all this time, you know, it's, it's lovely. And there is this incredible scoreline. Arsenal one, Swindon Town three. And that's football. Arsenal are still in the top flight even and now, but we proved they could be beaten, and beaten well. I'm only glad I could have played a part in it all. And now here's your chance to watch the whole game again. All 120 the thrilling minutes. Just coming down now. Some of the best of my life. It is tankered. I'm going to fill that tonight, that's for sure. Bertie Mee of Arsenal and Danny Williams of Swindon. Bertie Mee who led his Arsenal side out for a final against Leeds United last season which they lost. Danny Williams who has achieved what few managers can have achieved by taking a third division side to Wembley. There's Danny Williams. What a tremendous achievement by him and certainly there can be no prouder moment for any manager than to lead his side out for a Wembley final in front of a crowd of 100,000. And this really does prove that support for the Football League Cup has been improving every year since it began in 1960-61. So that this season, the competition will have been watched by no fewer than 2 million people, bringing extra revenue, of course, for every club. You could say that now the Football League Cup has truly arrived as a major competition in Britain and that football is glad to have it. The nerves here obviously jangling a little bit as the teams go towards the presentation area and soon they are to be presented to Her Royal Highness the Princess Margaret. Arsenal lining up on the right and Swindon Town now to take their place on the left. Tremendous support, of course, for this third division side. 30,000 people have come up from Wiltshire for the day of their lives.
Princess Margaret now coming towards the presentation area. With the president of the Football League, Mr. Len Shipman. to meet the Arsenal players. Frank McClintock, the skipper now, will introduce the rest of his team to Princess Margaret. Rob McNabb. John Samuels. A word with Peter Simpson. and your circle of these Arsenal players of course having suffered the disappointment of being beaten finalists last season and Bertie Mee the man who has done so much to bring Arsenal back to greatness and now the proud moment of course for third division Swindon Town Stan Harland the driving force in this side their big number six to present his team Tremendous achievement, of course, for a third division side like Swindon to have got here, but they've done it on merit. They've beaten many good sides on the way, including first division sides like Coventry and Burnley. Peter Noble. John Smith, having a word with John Smith, a Cockney, in fact, in the Swindon side, playing against the London side, Danny Williams. And the referee then, Bill Handley, and his two linesmen. Well, Danny Williams has got plenty to smile about, of course. Quite apart from anything else, the glory and the honour of bringing a side to Wembley. There is a tremendous financial profit for a third division side coming here. Arsenal, incidentally, will be playing in golden shirts this afternoon and blue shorts. Swindon all in white because normally both clubs play in red. the Arsenal team without its surprises number seven Radford obviously a man who is going to bring danger to Swindon's hopes he scored 19 goals this season such a well-balanced side this Arsenal one with a magnificent defense and skipper today by Frank McClintock his fourth Wembley appearance and three times he's been on the losing side twice with Leicester City in the FA Cup last season with Arsenal in this Football League Cup and Swindon they feel the side that beat Burnley in the semi-final with one exception. At full-back, Owen Dawson is injured and John Trollope comes in at number three. Vastly experienced player. He comes in at number three. 
And of course, they have a man, their number 11, that uh, Arsenal must fear, Don Rogers, whose football really puts him in a class high above the third division. A winger who can score goals, and he's got 22 of them this season. The referee this afternoon is Mr. Bill Handley from Cannock in Staffordshire, waiting to call the two captains together now. Got there obviously from Swindon. Now the toss up and the kiss. Well, he's travelled a long way for that. Now, who's won it? Well, it's hard to see who's won it, but it's quite clear from Mr. Handler's signals that the two sides have got a changeover, which means that Arsenal will be defending that goal to our left on a very heavy and very much cut up pitch, a pitch that has been hammered by the England-France game on Wednesday night and so much rain since. But the Wembley staff have really worked almost night and day to get this in a good playable condition. Although, of course, it's going to be the sort of Wembley pitch that we've never seen before. Bobby Gould, whose father, who is blind, will be in the stand here and to have the match read for him by Bobby's wife and Mr Gould's wife. Arsenal then to kick off to get this 1969 Football League Cup final between Arsenal and Swindon underway. Still waiting to clear the practice balls off the pitch. The walls begin to swell. John Smith well inside that centre circle as Arsenal kick off. And here's Peter Storey. Smith at the first flat from Rogers. Good ball here to Butler. Bring it on for Smart. And it's going to take a little time for the teams to get used to the pace of this pitch. It's going to stop and it's going to start. It's going to get caught up in the mud and on the sand. Storey again for Arsenal to Radford and he couldn't keep it in Radford of course who has already experienced Wembley this season having played for England here John Radford Trollop with the throw you're getting in well Samuels but in far too hastily to be able to direct his pass where he would want it and it's Thomas and a good overlap by Thomas little George Armstrong chasing him Good play by Armstrong. Always such a tenacious little player. McClintock to Simpson. He's become a really supreme player at the back for Arsenal, number six, Peter Simpson. Radford straying to that side. Now Noble, the man who scored the winner against Burnley. But not with a pass like that. Peter Noble, formerly with Newcastle. Armstrong. Burrows, tall, raw bone Scott to Thomas, a Welsh international for Swindon. The chase is on, and you must get there. He and you.
John Smith had several good seasons with West Ham and with Spurs. The man who does so much in midfield for them, but uh, he lost it there. Stan Harland, skipper of Swindon, giving his orders. McClintock to Radford. Gould flicking that on very nice, and McClintock coming forward as he likes to go. Good covering by Swindon, though. Certainly their nerves are not showing yet. But Gould again to Samuels. Good shot! Good goal! From Samuels, number eight. But a very good save by this man, Peter Downsborough. And a corner to Arsenal. Armstrong with it, a low one. And not a very good one. Well, that really was a good save by Downsborough. The last thing Swindon wanted was to concede an early goal. Yeah. Arsenal organising themselves in midfield. McClintock. Armstrong, the game was dotted with a fighter. Radford running into the middle. Looking for this one and it's just too high. John Smith coming away for Swindon. Don Rogers. Beating one and another. And the roar is going with him. Little jink. And a good cross. And it needed you to get that one away. Good work by Rogers. Smith. And a chance for Rogers again to keep it up. Off the referee. Breaking nicely for Swindon to Smith. To the far post. Noble is there. And Wilson. Lost the ball. And my goodness, Scott was nearly there to bang it home. A bad mistake by Wilson. This is Peter Noble. Five minutes gone, and really that was a bad mistake by Wilson. He was harried, certainly, but he lost that ball, and looks as though he may have taken a bang as well. And Smart was just a touch away from putting it home. Well, Swindon have said that they will come here to attack because they know no other way of playing, and that really was an example of how they can attack. John Smith, the man who organises things in midfield for Swindon, free kick to Arsenal now, Peter Storey. And a float one there towards Radford, this will test Downsborough, took the safe way out, good goalkeeping under pressure by Downsborough. Yeah. taking no chances and Wilson will need to get the ball to show himself that he can hold it. Clinton. Wilson, of course, was one who did not experience the defeat last season. Fennell was then in goal for Arsenal. Your and McClintock, the Arsenal skipper, giving his orders as well. Simpson. Gould. Playing it off for Samuels, now Armstrong. Oh, good play by Armstrong. Gould in the middle and Radford at the far side. Radford trying to get up to it. McClintock adding support. And of course, George Armstrong is a terribly underrated winger, but he's so full of fight and determination. Great assets to have at Wembley. to John Smith. Oh, good play by Port. Armstrong again, and again it's gone for him well. Gould in the middle. But Butler. And a goal kick.
Well, he won't have played at Wembley before Peter Downsborough, but he's had a very good opening eight or nine minutes. Formerly with Halifax Town. Heath. Formerly with Norwich City, once scored a goal for Norwich against Manchester United in a cup game at Old Trafford, so he knows what the big time's all about. Story. Just again, too hurried by McClintock. Smith. McNabb. Gould. Turned on that well. Good control by Gould to Samuels. Story. Radford coming for this one. And putting it between Trollope's legs. Good recovery by Trollope, though. Noble now to Rogers. Every time Rogers gets that ball, a roar goes up from the hopeful throats of Swindon. Smart. Rogers running inside. And Rogers is away. Now there's a great chance for him. Good work by Wilson. Noble following up. And my goodness, that Arsenal defence was caught wide open then. And Wilson atoning for that earlier mistake. What a bad mistake by the Arsenal defence though. Caught wide open there. A defence that has conceded only 18 goals in 30 first division games this season. But very nearly caught napping there. Noble, quite easily cut out by McNabb, Armstrong, McNabb, to Samuels, to Storey, Radford in support, here's Radford number seven, you can always tell Arsenal with the dark shorts, Radford now, and Haaland making a good sweep across field to get that one away. Ten minutes gone, no score. And the makings of a really magnificent match as Heath now sends Rogers away on the right. Rogers, oh good ball here to Smart. Well certainly Rogers has issued a warning on Arsenal as to what he's capable of. Peter Storey and this time offside against Rogers. Don Rogers beautiful control in difficult conditions you're finding Radford hoping to flick it on for McClintock Finding Smith. Smith's making himself available so often in these opening minutes, which is a good sign for Swindon. Don Rogers. Smith again. But no one's going to get that other than Samuels. Beating Gould, Radford. Armstrong looking for it on the far side. Gould. He's got Armstrong with him, but Thomas was watching very well. Goal kick. Bobby Gould, Arsenal's most expensive player, £90,000 from Coventry, and 13 goals this season. Peter Downsborough with the goal kick for Swindon Town, who've more than held their own in the opening quarter of an hour or so. Gould and Burrows in opposition. And a free kick 
given to Swindle. Holland, Ewell, Story, and Wilson getting near to four or five steps there. Armstrong. Fort. Good positive defense by Thomas. Rob Thomas. And Armstrong beating off Harland, a man who is a good foot higher than uh, Armstrong. Here's Armstrong again, number 11. Turning it across very well, Burrows. Now McClintock. Court. Oh, good ball by Court. Armstrong. Gould is there. Downs for again and sweep. But now the pressure is still on them. Free kick. Billy Wright was telling me before the game that it takes about 20 minutes for a side to get into its rhythm at uh, Wembley. Arsenal, in spite of that shot by John Samuel, seem to be getting a little more into their rhythm now. Yeah. Coming back hard to try and challenge him, and he's got to get past Thomas as well. Number two, Thomas. Good quick throw by Armstrong. The Samuels. And directed over his own goalkeeper. Story. Popping it back again quickly. The court! My goodness, that was very cool! Just past! Started by court, almost finished off by Bobby Gould, who thinks that he's won a corner. But Mr. Handley is saying, no, it's a goal kick to Swindon Town. And certainly no lack of excitement in the first 16 or 17 minutes. McNabb. Samuels. Samuels and McClintock already beginning to do some good work in midfield for Arsenal. This is Radford. Oh, one of those little ones to the near post. Cool going in. McClintock. And he's won. Well, I wonder what thoughts are going through the Arsenal bench. Don Howe in the centre there. And on the right of the picture, the Arsenal manager, Bertie May. Doing so much good work at the back for Swindon, though. Smith. Smith again. Trollop making the break on the left. But he hit Radford. Radford. Well, that can only be one thing. He was in full flight, Radford, pulled down by Trollop. Mr. Handley, 47 years old, in his last season as a league referee. What a way to go out at Wembley. Someone running over it for McClintock. Harland again. Harland and Burrows making a very effective twin 
pillars at the back. Stan Harland, the skipper. Court. And Smart coming in for Swindle. For John Smith. Noble. Loading it through to the striker, Noble. But now Gould away for Arsenal. Finding Armstrong. Gould, McClintock and Radford all going into that penalty area. Gould is one of them and Haaland, as ever, is with him. Heath for Swindon. Chased by McNabb. Is a vastly experienced defender, formerly with Huddersfield Town and an England player as well. Roger Smart. Nobody there. Armatuta. Samuels to Armstrong. They're certainly working Armstrong this afternoon and with good reason because his form is good. Armstrong again, but not to this one. And certainly Swindon are by no means overawed by the occasion or the opposition. Twenty minutes gone, no score. Rogers now to oh, rather a nameless one though by Rogers. Radford now for Arsenal from Story. Gould is waiting in the middle if he can get past Trollope. Good play by Radford in a corner off Burrows. He's got quite a turn of speed and he can be devastating in the air, particularly from corners. Ewer is up in that. Swindon penalty area. Gould is on the line. Armstrong with the corner. And this will go towards Gould. Redford! Well, he was high with that one, but again you get the evidence of a man standing on the goal line, putting defenders under pressure and causing just a flurry of a mistake and half a chance for somebody else. Gould it was, number 10 here, who was on that Swindon line. Upsetting Downsborough. Here's Downsborough with the goal kick. Smart. To Heath. Yes, he was obstructed there. Free kick to Swindon. This time Burrows is going up, the tall Scottish number five to the far side of the penalty area for this kick. Smith with it. And now Armstrong taking on Trollope and beating him. He's really full of running, isn't he? Gould in the middle still, a little one towards the near post, but not quite timed. Noble had straight offside, so it's a free kick to Arsenal. And it's Simpson to take the free kick. Gould, indeed Thomas was pushing Gould in the back. And so this is a free kick for Arsenal in a position of some danger for the third division side, Swindon. Oh. 
Simpson. Radford! <laughs> Having a game of his own downs, bro. He's got it down now. Such a dangerous player in the air, Radford. Muir getting well above Noble, although Noble is a very good header of the ball himself. Radford unable to dummy Smith. Butler to Smith. What a pity he played it there because Smart was bursting through the middle into a very dangerous position. Now Story on the overlap, but Trollope will surely get to this one. Downsborough coming to help him. Here's Downsborough. Samuel's a beautiful dummy, completely dummying Haaland there. And what a lovely ball, if Armstrong can get to it, he can't. Both the camps, the Arsenal camp on the left of that bench, the Swindon camp with Danny Williams there in the dark suit and white shirt on the right. Samuels. Radford. And a throw to Arsenal. McClintock with it. Radford holding off the challenge of Smith in a most unorthodox way. Fine midfield player, John Smith, with a lot of experience. In fact, he was an England reserve here against Ireland at Wembley some ten years or so ago. But that was pretty unorthodox. You're with the free kick then. And Armstrong to go for it, but hustled away by Thomas. Skipper, Stan Harland. There's something to say for himself as Downsborough now takes this goal kick for Swindon. The ball still playing all sorts of tricks on this pitch, as you must expect, with so much sand and mud. Even back passes have to be timed to a nicety. Story. Radford flicking that on for goal. More by luck than judgment, I think, though. McClintock to Story. And caught right up there. David Court and John Smith coming away for Swindon. Noble off in chase and Simpson covering well. Peter Simpson, Arsenal's number six. And John Trollope, Swindon's number three, giving Simpson another chance. Now to Samuels. It's really an afternoon for workers 
the men who are prepared to work very hard for their chances because the ball isn't skimming across this pitch by any manner of means very often has to be dug out of the sand and the mud calling for stamina and character Peter Story to Butler caught there almost caught Butler on the wrong foot but not quite Rogers to Smart Rogers going off in pursuit of this one, but I don't think anyone will get to that before it goes out. Throw to Arsenal. Bob McNabb. Now Rogers. Again, nobody there in a striking position for Swindon. Heath. And it might well be a part of Swindon's policy to try and contain Arsenal for as long as they can and strike out a bit later in the game. The last thing Swindon want, of course, is to concede this first goal, which could well shake their morale. And at the moment, they are containing this Arsenal side very well. Gould, now to Armstrong. And nobody's doing more for them than Burrows, the number five, and Haaland, the number six. But here's Heath, their number seven. Trollope to John Smith. That might put him in a bit of trouble. So half an hour gone now. No score. John Trollope, who broke his arm last August and was out of the side, but because Owen Dawson is unfit, he's back. Trollope again, but this time it's got no top. Samuels. Bradford trying his luck underneath the Royal Boxer on the far side. Now the rhythm for the moment seems to have gone from Arsenal. Your and There was nothing very rhythmic about that from Ian Your. Nab to Story to Wilson. John Smith putting Trollope under pressure because the ball hung. playing a 4-3-3 instead of the 4-2-4 that we expected with Smart, Trollop, with Smart rather, Noble and Rogers as the three men up front. And Arsenal, as usual, sticking to that all-purpose 4-3-3 formation with Gould, Radford and Armstrong as their three men up. The great value of that is, of course, having men who are capable of coming from behind to add strength to the three up front. John Rogers. And Simpson waiting for the word to go with his free kick for Arsenal. McNabb to Samuels. Armstrong. Now you're.
McClintock inquiring as to what that was given for. Thinking that the ball wasn't out, but it's a throw to Swindon. Heath now. Samuels. Showed too much of that to the Swindon defender, and it's John Smith. In turn, showing too much to Storey. Gould to Samuels. That looked like handball. And Butler claiming that it was his shoulder, the top of his shoulder. Joe Butler, only five foot six and a half. The number four, formerly with Newcastle, for Swindon Town. And a three-man Swindon wall forming up. Samuels playing it wide for Storey. And now Rogers bringing it out of defence for Swindon. Lovely play. And there to take the return. Good play by Rogers. quickly before Rogers can uh, assert himself and one man who must be delighted with the way it's going although he doesn't look it the man in the blazer Danny Williams the Swindon manager Trollope Harland Well, Wembley has had its nightmare goals in the past, but none really to equal that one. Well, there are plenty of people from Wiltshire now who are giving vent to their feelings, and there are going to be a few sore throats in the West Country tomorrow. Port. So important if Arsenal are going to do anything, they've got to do it quickly before Swindon really begin to dominate them and throw them completely out of their stride. And there's sure to be a certain amount of agitation on the Arsenal bench now, one would have thought. Butler. To Noble. Thomas, and now Heath away, my goodness it's given Swindon confidence, and Noble, 
over his own head, Peter Noble. Gould to Hart. And you're going to be in trouble every time you try carrying the ball on this pitch. Heath is away now. Armstrong to Samuels. And Swindon really are playing very well this afternoon. There can be no doubt at all about that. Well, that is the Arsenal bench. And you can imagine the consternation there. Samuels. And this time it is handball given against Butler. And a free kick to Arsenal. Top tipping it off for Samuels. And he gets the post! Flicked on, I think, by Bobby Gould. Onto the post. And the closest that Arsenal have been to a goal all afternoon. Downs has got plenty to say for himself, organising his defence. Five minutes to go to half time. Armstrong with the corner for Arsenal. Those twin pillars are there again. Samuels, Samuels again. Twice he tried to belt that one through the white shirts in that penalty area, and twice he failed. Long throw now by Bobby Gould. He's gone up onto the Greyhound track to do it. Trollop. Samuels. They're going to need his firepower now, Arsenal. This goal down. And Samuels really can hit them. of the afternoon now. And Samuels now with the throw for Arsenal. To court. To Samuels. Armstrong. And again, Thomas there first. with no room whatsoever and a corner given to Arsenal. You're now coming up into that Swindon penalty area. Here comes the corner, Gould trying to get in, Samuels. But he can't control it. And Swindon coming out very, very efficiently indeed. Smith Bradford to Story to McClintock to your Again, a mistake in the last of defence, and it's Rogers away this time. You're trying to get Ross to cover. Rogers still, and you're in very, very quickly as he had to be. But it's a corner to Swindon. 
Burrows is going up towards that Arsenal penalty area to add height and weight to the corner which Don Rogers is going to take for them. Straight to Samuels. Now Trollope. But now. Crowd screeching for half time already. I bet most of them are Swindon supporters. Butler to Smith. Story. Samuels for Arsenal. To court. And then he almost fall into empty space by court. And certainly Swindon must be very proud with the way things have gone by their own performance in this first half, containing all that Arsenal fire in the opening minutes so well, so confidently. And then taking what little bit of luck has gone their way to put them ahead through uh, Roger Smart. Well, they've really quit, acquitted themselves well, Swindon, in this Wembley game. And now it's Smart again, and the whistle goes for half-time. A very good first half indeed by Swindon with Roger Smart, this man with the ball, who has put them ahead against all the odds against First Division Arsenal. Ian Yor, one of the men who was involved in that terrible mix-up in the Arsenal defence. And so the half-time score in this League Cup final, Arsenal nil, Swindon won. We shall back with more soccer in just a moment. Swindon who are going to kick off in the second half, the team who are lying second in the third division and say that promotion is their number one target this season. But my goodness, I bet there'll be some driving ambition in the Swindon side in this second half to hold on to the lead that they've established in the first half to take this Football League Cup back to Wiltshire with them. A goal up at half-time scored by Roger Smart. And away we go now for the second half. Simpson. One can imagine there was a fair bit of talking going on in the Arsenal dressing room at half-time to put right the things that have been going wrong and make good the damage that's been done. Thomas with the throw. Judging that Smith to Rogers. And he miscued as well, but found Heath driving one in and down goes Wilson. Don Heath, the man with his shirt outside his shorts. And now it's Trollope. Simpson and Burrows who's missed so little in the air in fact Arsenal haven't been very good in the air in front of goal and Gould was far too indecisive there Heath to Downsbury
Bradford. Looking for Gould to play it off to Samuels. Gould. Taken out by Trollope. up everywhere Don Rogers Harland to Rogers again but he missed cued there didn't control it and Radford for Arsenal Good ball here to Armstrong, but a little too hard for him to control before Thomas got in, but he stuck to it. And Thomas's long legs getting the better of Armstrong. Good full-back play here by Rod Thomas. Now Samuels overhead. This might test Townsborough. McClintock was waiting for that one to come out. McClintock now. Very determined defence by Swindon. They're getting in very quickly, first time. Not giving the Arsenal forwards one moment to settle on the ball and think what they're going to do with it. Now it's Heath to Noble. Heath again. And beating McNabb. Butler to Smith. John Smith. Still Smith. Oh, the save! From Smith. Heath to Butler. And Simpson being caught. Arsenal so often being caught. Certainly Swindon are putting tremendous effort and determination now into this game. Sensing that it can be won. Free kick to Arsenal. And Peter Simpson to float one in there. Radford screaming for it at the far side of the penalty area. With his arm aloft, there he is. Looking for this free kick from Simpson. It'll only get to McClintock. And Thomas under no pressure at all. Quite properly and wisely letting it uh, go behind for a goal kick, Frank McClintock. Don Howe giving his orders, little tactical switches here and there. And he is suffering, you can be sure of that. Keith to Smith. Very dainty control by Smith. To Harland and now to Trollope. You would never think this was the third division side in the white shirts. Don Rogers with a troll up there advancing down the left. But without quite the control to make the most of it. John Trollope, a man of long experience with Swindon. Radford 
but it's Trollope again. Story. Samuels, Radford outside in. Here's Radford. Gould, Armstrong and Court, they're advancing in. And Dance with his cool as you like, taking that challenge from Bobby Gould. And I'm sure he's not hurt as badly as that. But it really was a fine piece of anticipation by Downsborough. Mr. Handy coming across to have a word with his linesman to see what he should give, a short discussion. physio on attending to John Samuels and Harry Cousins attending to Downsborough Cousins in fact who has been with Swindon since 1932 believe it or not before any of these players were born the Swindon train Not many people could have visualised this score at Wembley this afternoon, unless, of course, they came from Wiltshire. Well, Downsman looks to be all right again. Mr. Hanby has given a throw to Arsenal, which means that Gould wasn't penalised for that charge on Downsborough. And now it is a free kick to Swindon, which they've taken quickly. He. Oh. Caught. the story to Samuels paid off back and there really is no rhythm at all about Arsenal they've been completely thrown out of their stride by the Swindon goal and by the Swindon determination as well and now here's Rogers losing it this time to story McClintock to McNabb McNabb Ten minutes of the second half gone. Swindon still leading by this one goal to nil. Oh my goodness, the tackling is quick and decisive in that Swindon defence. Heath. Rogers looking for it. And so to is Smart. And Smart, I think, must be offside. Yes, he is. The goal scorer, Roger Smart. They call him the Roger Hunt of the Swindon side. Always around looking for the chances. Samuels but without the speed or the physique to get the better of Harlem Noble to Smart Rogers beating McNabb but not Yor. It's taking two men to look after him all the time and you're putting it back to Wilson. Armstrong, watched by Thomas and showing too much of it to Thomas. Those long legs again. Samuels, that was a good piece of running by Samuels. Oh, and good covering there by Downsborough, although it ricocheted, and Gould is in trouble on the deck, Swindon players around him, Harland in the middle of it, a challenge by Gould on Downsborough, who looks a bit shaken up a bit, and Mr Handley coming away to have a word with Gould. Stern talking to 
Although, of course, the ball looked as though it was coming across that Swindon goal, and any challenge that a forward makes in a cup final when you're a goal down must be a legitimate one. Gould had to go in. And there's some trouble there in the crowd, as it was at half-time, with the policemen piling into the terraces. What a pity if people can't come to a cup final, stand there and enjoy it. But Downsborough seems to be OK again, and it's a goal kick, or rather a free kick. Rogers setting noble free. He's only got smart in the middle, and Rogers calling for it, and here's Butler. playing so far below their best and being given no chance to improve by this superb spirit in the Swindon side. Bob McNabb with the throw for Arsenal. to Arsenal. post didn't come off from Noble but it's a corner instead to Swindon Town Bob Wilson Heath with the corner and that really was a bad one sliced behind the goal Now the second half gone, half an hour now for Arsenal to repair this damage. Wilson. ball for Swindon getting a round of applause as he does so Thomas with the free kick Muir is up McNabb is supporting and caught he's bounced twice luckily for court McNabb Arsenal still tending to consolidate at the back to make sure they give nothing else away but soon they must surely plunge more men forward in the hope of at least scoring an equaliser or making the chances that from which an equaliser might come there's Radford who's doing so much loan work there Smart to Trollope Trollope again and Simpson
Lewis now as he got the speed. Two men converging. He's down. Is it a penalty? It is not. And Mr. Handley was in a direct line there, claiming that Gould was not fouled. Swindon breathe again there for sure. McClintock looking for Radford. Trollope misjudging that one. He's only got Gould in the middle. Armstrong steaming up as well. Radford, good save. Well, he must have felt that Downsville would have one eye on men advancing on him, and he tried to pile one in there just inside that near post. Gould on that ass on that Swindon line. You're in the penalty area as well, number five. Here comes the corner. Gould again putting Downsborough under pressure, but Downsborough as cool as you like. Really has played well, this Swindon goalkeeper. Another corner to Arsenal. And you're going right in there, but again Downsborough punching to safety. Samuel's too high. John Samuel's. Springboarding forward into attack for Swindon Town. Butler. To Smart. Trollope has gone down the left. was Thomas. So it's another corner to Arsenal. Rod Thomas has certainly added to his stature this uh, this afternoon. Three Welsh caps last year and there must be more in the offing for him. Comes the corner towards Simpson and now Radford. Plenty of Arsenal men up now but so many Swindon men back. One of them is Heath getting it away again. Heath Really has played well, he. But then who hasn't on this Swindon side? Samuels. Radford. Good save again by Downsborough. Well, he may scratch his head and wonder how he's going to beat Downsborough. But it's another corner to Arsenal. Armstrong to take it. Radford again, trying to pick it on, Gould is in there, and another corner. Arsenal just keeping two men back now to watch Roger Smart, the only Swindon man up on the halfway line as the corner comes in again. Under that crossbar, Court going in. And another corner. And the man who comes out of, with so much credit is this man, Peter Downsborough. 
against all the odds. He's getting up there and punching these balls away. Here's another one coming in. You're getting in. Up we go again. McNabb. And now he. Simpson. To McNabb. To Samuels. Too slow. Lindog has gone streaking through, and Radford is there, and down scrum. And a corner! Off Burrows, number five. Well, they're taking all this punishment, Swindon. Here comes yet another corner from Armstrong. Again under that bar, and again down for there. What a game he's having. First game he's ever had at Wembley, and my goodness, he's going to remember this one. Yet another corner, placed a bit wider this time, looking for McClintock, and Yor. But before Yor can get there, it's Harland, it's still bobbing about McNabb! Oh, fine save, it's still not out! Radford. Radford again. Court going in, and down spot. What a goalkeeper! And now he Rogers outside him, but he's running into trouble. What a pity he had Don Heath completely marked, dangerously placed outside him. And now Radford. Arsenal piling more men forward now as they must. Gould to Samuels. Oh, There are still 20 minutes to go, and Downsborough on this form looks as though he's equal to anything. That tremendous shot from John Samuels. My goodness, well he deserves the breather he's taking. Armstrong with yet another corner. Radford going in. You are! Oh! What magnificent defence by Swindon. What magnificent defence by Swindon. They really have taken some punishment in this second half. And they look as though they're prepared to go on taking it until nightfall. Downsborough, the hero, with the goal kick. Radford. And George Graham is coming on as a substitute for Arsenal. And who is it to come off? Well, Arsenal for the moment have 12 men on the pitch. It looks as though Peter Simpson is going off. Simpson is going off. And Arsenal have brought a forward, George Graham on. Obviously to try and increase their firepower, even if it means taking a few risks at the back. Well, that's what they've got to do. And now it's cool. To Graham, his first touch. Samuels, Radford offside. At least the linesman's flag is up. And the referee now has given it. And Gould is in pain on the deck. And what a twist this would be for Arsenal if Gould, in fact, was injured to the point that he had to go off because Arsenal, of course, have already made their substitution. George Wright, the physio, is there.
Well, Gould is all right again, and it's a free kick to Swindon Town, and Peter Downsborough to take it. to Butler trying to play it inside McNabb but he's very agile indeed and spotted that well now George Graham McClintock to Radford And McClintock with the throw. Radford moving inside, finding a bit of space. McClintock to Armstrong. Nicely played by Armstrong. Paul McClintock. This could be a little bit dangerous. A good shot! Good play! My goodness, did anyone hit Graham here? Number 12. To get a toe to that one, and he's quite rightly a little annoyed with himself for not doing so. So close, he's saying. As indeed it was a very good break by McClintock there. A red balloon now snaking into the penalty area. about a quarter of an hour to go now Swindon still ahead and John Smith in possession for them not a good ball though to McNabb Burrows but only finding Radford a little too slow Heath to Smart to Trollope and Heath is sprinting on for this one. Noble up in support. My goodness, it hit Heath. And that would have gone in, I think. Noble. Bobby Gould. Getting to the point, Arsenal now, where they've got to gamble everything. And men coming forward, who falling very dramatically. McClintock trying to set Armstrong free. Good play by Thomas, with little space to do it in. John Trollope. And now Graham for Arsenal. Samuels finding Radford. A little chip, but someone's offside the lines and Swagger's up. And also a substitution on the Swindon side now. Willie Penman is on and John Smith has gone off. Smith now sitting on the trainer's bench. Putting on his tracksuit top. And Willie Penman, formerly with Glasgow Rangers and Newcastle. There's John Smith. And here's Bob Wilson. Oh, 
his first bad kick of the afternoon. Penman getting it away. Now here's one for that for the chase, but Downs were there. Quick to spot it. In any case, the linesman's flag was up. Rogers. Oh, very nearly getting it in. Heath. Yes, he must have been impeded by McClintock. Good refereeing there by Mr. Handley. And he really has controlled this game well. It's not been a difficult one for him to control, mind you. But what he's had to do, he's done well. And he and his two linesmen have really worked well as a team. Mr. Castle, one linesman, and Mr. Poulton, the other one. Of course, that's the essence of refereeing, that all three should work as a team. And it's Willie Penman, the man in the clean white strip. He looks as though he may be going to take this free kick. No, Rogers. Blasting one, or trying to blast one through that Arsenal wall. McClintock to Samuels. Ten minutes to go now for Swindon to hold on for really what could be the most extraordinary Wembley victory of all time. And a cup defeat for Arsenal that will go down, of course, with that infamous one against Walsall in 1932 in the FA Cup. Graham. Radford very bravely trying to get in there to head that one, but Trollope's boot was there first. Your to Graham. Nicely played out there and timed beautifully for Armstrong. He's got to get past Thomas, though. He does? No, he doesn't. Again, that long leg. And Thomas in a bit of pain. Or was he having just a rest? that he and this Swindon defence so thoroughly deserve. But here comes that corner. No time is being wasted now. Radford trying to get up. Story to McNabb. To Armstrong. A nasty little cross this. Gould trying to get under it, but beaten for weight and for spring by Harland. And it's the throw unfairly taken by McNabb. So it goes the other way, in fact, to Swindon. See the story. John Trollope then with the throw for Swindon. Trollope again. And really a bit of trouble there from Noble, who's given him trouble the whole afternoon, and the referee has blown his whistle for a free kick to Arsenal. But certainly this man, Peter Noble, has given Ian Ewer and the rest of the Arsenal defence a fair bit of trouble the whole afternoon.
Bradford. And seven minutes now left for Arsenal to save something from this wreckage. Seven more minutes now for Swindon to hold out for really what will be one of the most glorious victories, certainly the most glorious victory in their whole history. They've been a Football League Cup since 1920, and this is the greatest day of all for them, but here's Gould. Oh, and he completely missed kick, Blackford, oh, he couldn't get his kick in. Well, no! And a goal kick. So much relieved, Peter Downsborough with the goal kick and certainly this Swindon defence has organised itself very well and their tackling has been quick and incisive the whole afternoon. They've played with so much spirit, Swindon, that you really can't deny the fact that they deserve to be in front against an Arsenal side that really has never shown its true form. Joe Butler... and a handball by Samuels but the referees allowed it to go on and rightly so because here's Penman and Arsenal covering up as quickly as they can <laughs> oh and of Heath that really wasn't necessary Name taken. A good piece of refereeing that by Mr. Handley. Well, the authorities want to cut out gamesmanship, and by teaching men the lesson like this, this is one way to cut it out. Five more minutes now for Swindon to hold out. And judging by their performance over the last 85 minutes, there's nothing to say that they can't do it. Your Straight to Rogers of all people. Graham, now cooled off in support. Can Gould get to it now? It's a goal! By Gould! And my goodness, is he not pleased with life? Bobby Gould! Oh, what a smile! And they are really happy, he's crying! Bobby Gould is crying! He's crying, Bobby Gould, with the joy of it all. Oh, what a moment for him. And somewhere up in the stands in Wembley today is Bobby Gould's father, who is blind and is being told about this moment of joy and agony for Bobby Gould by Bobby Gould's wife. What a moment. And Bobby is in such pain that it looks as though he's under so much emotional stress that he might well want to go off. And poor Peter Downsborough, the man who has done more than any man could ask of a goalkeeper this afternoon. And now, with something like three minutes left of normal time, he's beaten at last. With three minutes to go, 1-1. One, one. And there's a difference now. Suddenly Arsenal has come to life. The whole bench, <laughs> even Bernie Me giving his little word of... This fjord is there. But what a tragedy for Swindon, who have played so beautifully.
and so far above their third division station. Two minutes now to go. And certainly if Arsenal supporters think this is all over, let me remind them of how Swindon came back with so much courage in that semi-final playoff against Burnley when everything seemed to be going against them. Well, it's providing a tremendous climax. Well, there's no doubt where they come from. A player on the deck now, an Arsenal man. It's Frank McClintock. One minute ago now, and a certain relief mingled with the joy in that crowd of Arsenal supporters, you can be sure of that. Dog is all right, Butler for Swindon. To stand Harland, the skipper who will drive his men even more now. And McNabb getting it away to Graham. Graham in turn losing it to Penman, Samuels. We're in injury time now and we are facing half an hour of extra time. Over here's Roger, a bad one by McNabb. Roger still, a good shot, oh! My goodness, back on the rebound by Don Rogers, superb play. Well, that's the sort of courage and the spirit that there is in this Swindon side. They refuse to believe that things are going against them as indeed they did twice in that semi-final playoff against Burnley, when it seemed to be. We're well into injury time now. And Bob Wilson with the ball for Arsenal. Armstrong. Well, Swindon have had 17 and a half hours of cup football to get here. They've had another hour and a half now, and they're going to be faced with another half an hour. So if they do win this Football League Cup, my goodness, they're a place of football to be worth it. Don Heath, and Court right back. And Court, in fact, is on the deck in a bit of pain. George Armstrong, George Graham rather. And there goes the whistle for the end of 90 minutes with Arsenal having been saved so close to the end by this man, Bobby Gould, who may well have hurt his chest. It may not be that he was crying, in fact, but merely wincing with pain. But there is the final score at full time, not the final score, the score at the end of 90 minutes. Arsenal 1, Swindon 1 and we go into extra time. Now is the time for hurried orders from coaches and managers. Bertie Mee there. And just a few yards away, there's Danny Williams doing the same thing with Swindon Town.
This is one aim for Radford. Trollope is there with him. And Trollope very coolly putting it away. He's done well today, Trollope. Samuels. Now Graham is going for this one. So cool, Downsborough. Graham. He certainly added something to this Arsenal attack since he came on, Graham. A certain fluency and a sprightliness. Looking for men and finding them. And now Rogers though, with Noble. This is a dangerous one for Arsenal. Heath on the right, but he won't give it in. McClintock, the skipper, to Samuels. This whole match is still on a knife edge as Story comes forward for First Division Arsenal. Gould, the goal scorer. And a throw. Willie Penman. Rogers away again, finding Noble. To Rogers. Well controlled on his body by Noble. Rogers again. And now Armstrong. John Samuels to George Graham. Strong. Taking on Thomas, but again not beating him. Armstrong. McClintock advancing on this one. Gould is brought down. McClintock is still there. And George Armstrong with the throw for Arsenal. Graham, dangerous looking move, almost getting through to Gould. McClintock going in, but never likely to catch that in the sort of way that he wanted to. Smart, but three Arsenal defenders are back. But yes, Heath advancing very quickly. Smart now in the middle. And very nearly getting it through to Smart. There really is no end to the courage that Swindon are showing this afternoon. And the skill. And a free kick to them now. Stan Harland. A real driving force in this Swindon side. Coming forward once more to put this Arsenal defence under pressure. But Samuels much too slow. A chance now for Heath to put it back again. John Samuels. Samuel straight to Thomas 
to Noble. And in spite of that terrible setback just before the end of normal time, Swindon are again looking the better side. Harland driving them on. Oh, a bad one again by Samuels. Butler. And you're. And now McClintock. With a ball that meant nothing. Muir and Noble and Wilson. See the story. McClintock. Samuels. Armstrong outside him. Here's Armstrong. Samuels again in support. And now Penman for Swindon Town. Oh, yeah. Graham to Armstrong. <laughs> Roger Smart. really seem to have slowed up an awful lot now in the last few minutes one would have thought that goal just before the end would have given them an impetus but in fact they seem to be flagging quite alarmingly Swindon looking to fit aside as Heath tries to get this one across again Samuels once more Samuels of course who had a flu scare earlier this week and now Graham oh beautiful ball inside now for Radford well watched by Trollope Very well played by Trollope. That looked to be a beautiful ball inside the fullback for Radford. But Trollope recovered very well. He looks in a bit of pain, doesn't he, Radford? As though he is suffering a little bit. But then they do say that this is it's difficult enough playing 90 minutes on this wide and open Wembley pitch. But to play an extra half an hour in conditions like this really is a test of all your training. Now I want to hear the story trying to put it across. Graham is there and keeps it in but gets no chance from Rogers to do anything with it. Oh, confusion there amongst the Swindon players. headed enough to try it again McClintock to your and this is now falling for Thomas and Rogers offside Still popping up in dangerous positions, though, Don Rogers. Gould. Chased by Burrows, mercilessly. Three minutes to go now to half-time of this period of extra time. John Radford with the throw for Arsenal. Gould, picking it out. Is Gould again? Oh, good save! Flicked on by Graham to Gould. And Downs for showing it again that his form is unimpaired by the one that he led through. That's Armstrong now. With the corner. Downs for going in again and Graham also. Smart. Butler forging on. You're putting uh, Court under some pressure there, and it's Don Rogers. Rogers still going on. 
but alas for him, no support. Good dummy there by Thomas. Look at George Armstrong chasing him though. Still Thomas going on for Noble. Well there, you are. Radford to Gould to Graham. And Trollope spotting that Graham had pushed it just a shade too much forward. Samuels playing a long one towards Radford. to Penman on the break Heath outside him as Heath Heath trying to dummy pass McNabb and does so there's a chance for him oh it hits the post what a let off again for Arsenal from Roger Smart the man who scored their goal but very good save by Bob Wilson pushing it onto the post they really do come back, these Swindon boys. And they've won themselves a corner. And Gould banging it over for another corner. Well, we've got just about to the end of this period of extra time. And it's a brave man who put his money on a winner of this game. It's still so very even and so very, very close. Very nearly through. Rogers! A goal by Rogers! Don Rogers! Goal 23 of the season for him. comeback by Swindon Town all the courage in the world to go ahead of Arsenal again after being pulled back so tragically so close to the end of normal time Don Rogers puts them ahead and now that really does put Arsenal in trouble there is the end of the first period of half of extra time Swindon have gone ahead by two goals to one through this man, Don Rogers. this goal ahead and 15 minutes more for them to hang on for what really would be a tremendous victory now a free kick to Swindon Butler to Penman Rogers the great hero here's Rogers again and again so much confusion in this 
usually so orderly Arsenal defence. Trollope. And it's the defence that has held Arsenal together for so long this season. And now when most they wanted to, they've creaked and they've grown a little bit and have conceded these two Swindon goals. Wilson put under such pressure there that Butler was able to pick it up. Still Armstrong, three men ahead of him. And taking just a little too much. Joe Butler coming in for Swindon. Gould making the break, it's taking too long to control it. And Barrows complaining for the rest of his defence that he wants a little more cover. And certainly it was depreciated if Swindon bring every man back now to protect the lead that they've fought for for so long. And certainly Arsenal must plunge everybody forward now. McClintock with the throw. Well, <laughs> there's some West Country happiness there and no mistake. Goal kick to Swindon. Here's Don Rogers. Lintock is on the deck in, uh, in some pain, probably from cramp, I would think. And Swindon coming forward, the referee allowing it to go on. And Rogers beating court, but not able to keep it in. It can only be a touch of cramp. all right again, Bob Wilson with the ball for Arsenal Haaland and Smart just banging that away to safety to swallow a few more precious seconds and they really have become precious seconds for Arsenal now something under 10 minutes to go of extra time Swindon still very gallantly holding to this one goal lead that they have Peter Storey and now can Heath get to this one he's got Noble there in the middle Heath oh just wide well saved by Wilson
And of course, if Arsenal concede anything more now, this really must be up with them. They've got enough work to do as it is. To Smart, back to Heath. And good save by Wilson. Straight to Thomas. Willie Penman to Don Heath. Swinham players telling him to go down the wing, so that's where he's going. And a throw to Swinham. And another throw to Swindon. And the whistle has gone for something. Possibly a foul throw. Yes, it's a throw to Arsenal. Noble. Heath. could do and Swindon of course quite content to let the seconds roll by you're trying to get above Noble but failing to do so back to Heath again Rogers and Smart in the middle but Heath playing the gamesman and trying to take it to the corner flag Penman so badly out of form that it isn't true and being given still no chance to find that form by Swindon Town and a free kick has been given to Swindon some 20 or 30 yards back from where the ball had gone to Now it's a throw. Willie Penman to take it. Noble. And now Samuels for Arsenal. Armstrong losing it, but Samuels in support. Bad ball again, straight to Penman. Mind you, it's a terribly difficult pitch, but it's the same for both sides, of course. Although, of course, everyone has been saying that a pitch like this is a great leveler between first and third divisions. Rogers, smart up with him. This is little Butler coming in. Six minutes now for Swindon to hold on for this famous victory. Six minutes left for Arsenal to save themselves again. throw to Swift. Peter Noble. Good running by Penman. Rogers up with him in the middle. But first he's got to get past your Noble's come up in support. Again, they're uh, eating up seconds with a little touch of gamesmanship. And a corner, off your. And Arsenal looking very tired and very dejected now. 
and Swindon some five minutes or so away from victory if they're going to hold on. Don Rogers with the corner. Armstrong. Gould finding Samuels. Story going up the right. Here's Story. Radford. Oh, Trollope reading it beautifully. He really hasn't put a foot wrong, John Trollope, this afternoon. Ian Yore. And Graham is in there, but he's offside. And Mr. Handley, who has been right up with the play the whole afternoon. And I must say, that is all to the credit of a 47-year-old on a pitch as heavy as this. Bill Handley from Cannock in Staffordshire. Gould. McClintock. Now caught. Three minutes to go now. And Noble. And Arsenal so stretched to the back now because they've been piling men forward. But what a poor pass by Noble. He clearly wanted that one way ahead of him, but now it's Armstrong for Arsenal. Story to Graham and Harlan playing it safe and who can blame him? Stan Harlan, the skipper of Swindon Town. McClintock, the skipper of Arsenal. Radford and now McNabb trying to line it up and as he did so, Rogers was in. Now two minutes to go. And every step must be an effort now for players on both sides on this very heavy pitch. McNabb pumping it forward, hopefully again, and Haaland there to get it away. Butler there in support. Tremendous performance by Swindon Town. George Graham, but a linesman has got his flag up. That's Stan Harland, I think it is, in the penalty area there. Seems to have taken a knock. And the referee calling on Harry Cousins, the Swindon trainer, to put the matters to rights. is all right again and you're now for Arsenal and spark away for Swindon Rogers is streaking ahead and he's onside beautiful play that is that
Bob Wilson so dejected, understandably so. And there is this incredible scoreline. Arsenal 1, Swindon Town 3, the final whistle. Swindon have won the Football League Cup for 1969. The man who scored two of them, number 11. And number 8, Roger Smart, who scored the first one. Trollope. Oh, the smiles of Swindon Town. Bob Wilson. And Bobby Gould has scored the Arsenal goal that seemed to have saved them. So Swindon Town, in fact, repeat what Queen's Park Rangers did here a couple of years ago when they came as the third division side and won the cup against West Bromwich Albion. And Swindon showing such tremendous skill and tremendous courage and stamina, withstanding mighty Arsenal and beating them convincingly and deservedly, 3-1. Now it's Swindon's turn to go and collect the Football League Cup from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret, being led by number six, Stan Harlan, such an inspiring skipper. And a defeat for Arsenal that really goes down with Walsall in the FA Cup in 1932. Two successive years Arsenal have been here, twice they've been beaten. Lord Snowden there as well. President of the Football League, Mr. Len Shipman. And that's the moment all Wiltshire has been waiting for. It's Don Rogers coming down now, looking at his tankard. I'm going to fill that tonight, that's for sure. Joe Butler, John Trollope, Willie Penman, the substitute, and Rod Thomas. A very fine fullback display from him. Peter Downs for a superb in goal. And Frank Burrows as well. John Smith, who went off. And now Frank McClintock, his fourth appearance at Wembley and destined to be a four times loser. So there must be sympathy for him. Bob Wilson. George Gray on the substitute, Ian Ewer, and really a tank at his poor consolation when they really wanted that Football League Cup. Bob McNabb, John Radford, Georgie Armstrong, well that's it, and Peter Storey. Peter Simpson who came off, and Bobby Gould, Arsenal's goal scorer. Mr. Castle, the referee, or rather Mr. Handley, the referee from Cannock, Mr. Castle and Mr. Poulton, the two linesmen who've worked so well together as a team this afternoon, following him. Well, he's still got plenty to say for himself after all that running and all that effort. He's not short of breath now, Stan Harlan. What has become a traditional lap of honor Swindon can release themselves from the press photographers which again I'm sure this lap of honour as Arsenal troop disconsolately away well no words will offer them any comfort now 
well beaten by third division Swindon Town. What is there you can say to them? was running there behind them. What a tremendous achievement though for Danny Williams. After playing something like 600 games for Rotherham, he came to Swindon four years ago and now has taken this third division side to this tremendous victory at Wembley today. Downsburg and Noble holding the cup now. John Trollope taking his turn. Testing the fitness of the press photographers as well. Don Heath with Downstra. afternoon this third division side Swindon Town have produced for us all here to go ahead to be pulled back and apparently flung to the floor but to come back so brilliantly with those two goals in extra time a really magnificent performance energy to run like this. <laughs> Heath is still bounding with it. There can be no moment like this. That's the manager there, holding the plinth and holding the cup with Stan Harland. And everybody in Swindon and in his side knows just how much Danny Williams has done to bring that cup back to Wiltshire. Well, the life of a manager has its trials and tribulations, and goodness knows there are a few moments like this. So there we are, jubilant Swindon, Arsenal unhappily and sadly in their dressing room at this moment, wondering what on earth had hit them with a final score in this 1969 Football League Cup final of Arsenal 1, Swindon Town 3.
now Rogers bringing it out of defence for Swindon. Lovely play. And there to take the return. Good play by Rogers. Oh, and a terrible mix up. No ball. Simpson. Smart. And no. What a terrible mistake by Arsenal. man who put his money on a winner of this game it's still so very even and so very very close very nearly through Rogers a goal by Rogers Don Rogers goal 23 of the season for him Tremendous comeback by Swindon Town. All the courage in the world to go ahead of Arsenal again after being pulled back so tragically, so close to the end of normal time. Don Rogers puts them ahead. And you're now for Arsenal. And smart away for Swindon. Rogers is streaking ahead and he's onside. Swindon Town 